Hey guys, what a wild ride in the stock market today. In this video, I'm gonna cover what actually happened, what that means for the market moving forward, and where the market potentially is heading. Uh, I'll throw out you know, all the levels that I'm kind of looking at, all the charts that are giving me a read on the market, and then I use all that information <clears throat> all combined together to try to understand where the market might be heading and then uh, how I want to position myself for that. So that's really the point of this channel. It's all about money, finance, uh, and ultimately I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to make a bunch of money. And anybody that wants to follow along um, and uh, get any value from my chart reads, uh, I hope they can make a bunch of money as well. So here we go. <clears throat> Nasdaq futures. So. The reason why I watch the NASDAQ futures is because that's gonna tell me where tech potentially is gonna go. And tech is the, is the key, it's kind of the, the keystone to this market, uh, where if tech falls, then the market should fall too. And that's just because the markets, all the participants in the market have piled in to just a very few stocks. They continue to go, they're kind of like the go-to stocks and it's the FANG stocks. And everybody piles in and tries to hide out there uh, and they all try to pile in into that, thinking that that's where all the strength is going to be, and those stocks will hold up the entire market. And it's you, you know probably not true, but at the same time, that's why we want to watch tech and and Nasdaq futures. So, all right. So look what happened today. This is important. There's some really important things that happened today. Follow along, and uh, hopefully you can learn something. This level right here. I'm going to zoom in right here at. 89.57, all right, that is a very, very important level in the NASDAQ futures. And what happened today was we were moving higher and, and strongly pretty much all day. And it was, you know, it was to the point where I was looking at the market and I was thinking, okay, I should probably get ready to cover my shorts. I'm seeing signs today that the market is holding up. It's strong and it's holding up. And um, we uh, we're, tomorrow should build on that strength. But look at that. In the last hour, basically, uh, you know, the last hour and a half, you we sold off and came back down and closed, you know, relatively, you know, pretty far down from that level, 89.60. And if I roll out, if you can, you can see where that level comes from. Here it is, right here, 89. Um, you know, 89.60 basically. And that's the level back in January. It held the support, lots of reactions there. Then we broke down, here it is right uh, right there, held as resistance and resistance again. And then we came up and it held as resistance again right there. Then we broke, we broke to the upside, ended up being a false breakout, sold off. And then today we broke to the upside again. So this market is loaded with all kinds of whipsaw signals. It, it is a tricky one, I, I must admit. But I think that's the nature of a bear market. You know, bear markets, uh, they move they move quickly and they move violently. And I think that's what we're in. So that's why we see these end of the day, you know, recaptures basically. And we sold right back off. That held as major resistance. They had a shot, you know, the bulls had a shot to break out. Everything looked bullish at this moment. You know, an hour before the close, everything was bullish. I was looking through all my charts and many of the charts just looked bullish. And so I was going to put a video out midday today and and let everyone know, okay, I, I see signs where the market's changing and it's starting to look bullish. But I just thought that were so close to the level, it just made more sense to get more data points uh, and wait towards the end of the day or the close to put out that video. And then, you know, I figured if we closed bullish, I'd put out a video letting everyone know, you know, what actually happened in the charts and that we closed bullish, but we got this end of the day reversal basically. And so that's pretty bearish because you had the breakout and then you reversed recaptured. So that's a recapture on the NASDAQ futures. Moving on to triple Q's. Triple Q's pretty much closed right at resistance. Here it is right here. But I suspect we gap down tomorrow because the futures closed back under their major level. They should sell off. And that probably sets us up for a gap down tomorrow in the Q's. Uh, that's just what I'm saying. That's what I that's what I see there. But it closed right at support right there. Uh, 217.55. It's pretty much right there. So 
that's either holding as support or holding as resistance. It's close enough where it could be either one. So that just means, you know, I think there's a gap down tomorrow and that's what I see in the queues. Now the queues has been stronger than, than uh, the SPY, but we'll, we'll see what plays out tomorrow. Moving on to the SPY, this is a little bit more important, I suppose, because this is the market. But what are we seeing? Well, look, we've we have we've had this sideways trading range for quite a while. You know, going back to April April seventh, it's it's been in this trading range um, for for about a month now, and we've been chopping sideways, consolidating, and we had a breakout right here. Here's your breakout. We broke higher. But that ended up being a false breakout. And like I said a couple of videos back when we had this breakout, it was on really low volume. I didn't believe it. And sure enough, it sold off. But then it held at the, you know, the first support zone right here at 280, which is kind of right in the middle of this range. And then today, you see what happened today. We were moving higher all day today, breaking out again, um, pretty close to the close. It looked to me like we were going to close above this this uh, resistance line kind of above this range. And usually when you see something where if you break out once and then you fail, but then you all of a sudden you come back and break out again, usually that's gonna stick. That second attempt will, will hold and they'll, you know, will start to move higher. So that's what it looked like to me towards the end of the day. But then all of a sudden sold off and sold, you know, closed the day pretty much at the lows of the day uh, for the trading range and recaptured the trading range. So we could pop tomorrow again, you know, we, they could continue to pop this thing and chop it around. But, uh, you know, as of today, that's a bearish close. We had another false breakout, you know, here's your breakout and a failure. So another false breakout there and a lower high too. So, you know, here's your high, here's your lower high. So maybe this price action, this false breakout sets up the momentum for us to break all the way down to 272. So I see support down here at the bottom of the range. We've already tagged the middle range. So yeah, we'll probably have a little reaction there. Maybe it'll stop, uh, you know, selling for the day. Maybe that hits that tomorrow. But then I think ultimately we get down here, 272. And if we break to the bottom, then I think we're gonna get down to this 265 level um, that goes back to this, this area right here. So that's, uh, that's a bearish close, you know, bullish for the day and closing the day in a bearish posture with a recapture. Uh, moving on, XLF, and yeah, nothing really here. Just this is bearish. You know, we had a channel broke, sold off. If you're interested in the XLF, let me know. I'll, I'll talk through it in a more detail on the um, on a future video. But the way I use this as of right now, you know, I'm not trading it, but this is bearish. Apple. Even Apple closed bearish. All right, so Apple's a little tricky too. Apple's been a tricky guy. Here's what I see in Apple. I've got a trend line, this trend line right here that I could move it, all right? I could mark it right here and that would capture this reaction low and then it would cap capture this reaction and then this cluster right here, that's three. Or I could leave it where it's at. And the reason why I wanna leave it where it's at, here's why I like this one better. I've got a reaction low um, this reaction is, is pretty close, so I could call that a reaction. A reaction right here, one here, and then look, you broke down, so that's a breakdown of that trend line, but the very next day, look where they recaptured it, right to the trend line right there. So that tells me, okay, this is the trend line that traders are watching, and then as you move up, look at the, look at the back test right here. See the back test, that candle comes up, tags it, and then rolls over. So that's another confirmation that this uh, this held and oh and also all through here you can see support you know it was holding support through here and then look at today's price action support support just walking the trend line support support each hourly candle was just kind of walking that trend line and then it broke so I think that's our trend line and I think we got another breakdown so this ultimately might have just been a back test kind of a fail this was your breakdown right here not impulsive recover kind of walk support and then break down. So depending on how we, what happens tomorrow, if we gap down, um, you know, then that would maybe be the kind of the official breakdown. That's what I see on that one. Microsoft, look at that. Moved it to the top side. I've got that line drawn out. I'm not sure where that comes from. Yeah, that's, uh, 
That's your resistance right there on Microsoft. So we came right up to resistance, held, sold off, recaptured the flag. So still in the flag. Uh, and this flag is a continuation of the breakdown pattern. So you have a breakdown right here, then you flag, and then you continue the breakdown pattern. So um, that's what that tells me. Although it could break to the upside, you know. Uh, let's look here. Amazon. Amazon closed right at support, basically. So Amazon's still flagging. And this could be a bull flag as well. So this is not uh, necessarily bearish right now. Um, Costco, nothing really there. Walmart, this one, this one, I'm short this one as well. Um, look, they tried to break it to the upside and recover this trend line. This trend line, if you go to the daily chart, goes all the way back to this big old wedge. Uh, and this is a daily chart here. So you can draw this wedge out, mark this wedge out on the daily chart, uh, logarithmic scaling. That's what all my charts are. But look, if I zoom into the, well, you can just see it on the daily. Look at that. Nice wick, overshot it, failed, covered, or closed right back within resistance. So this is holding as resistance. This tells me that this, uh, this is moving lower and this was a back test. So if that's true, this was an objective area to potentially get short. We should probably gap down tomorrow or just sell off maybe right at the open, start to move lower now. Because we broke down, we had a, a back test, now you wanna see the price action move lower if that's gonna confirm this bearish breakdown move, all right? So that's where I think it should go. I think it, it they could gap it higher and then just sell it off. But the point is the price action should be heading south to confirm that this was a back test and we're gonna roll over now. Here's SOXX, I'm short this one as well. Nothing really here, just you know, big bearish rising wedge on the hourly candle breakdown, uh, kind of a reaction bounce, and you know, still bearish. So this could chop around some more sideways, move. Yeah, this could even do a full back test, um, but ultimately it's still a bearish uh, setup in the, in the medium term and, and potentially the long term. Tesla, still short this one. So look what they tried to do today. They, they you know, they, um, Okay, so had to take a quick little break, but um, anyways, this is still this is still bearish. You got a big, nice bearish rising wedge. You had an impulsive breakdown, a little back test, starting to sell off again. So let's zoom in. Soxx, you can see. Look, there's your gap. You closed below the gap, um, right there. So you know, when I read this, I I, I think we gap fill and then probably start to work our way lower. Uh, you know, first profit target's gonna be right here at 215. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to some other charts and then we'll wrap up. Uh, Tesla, not sure if I covered this one. Sorry guys, I had to take a break. Uh, but look, here's Tesla. Gap, here's your level, to, uh, 780, 50 basically, 780, 40. You can roll that out on the hourly chart. You can see it right there. See how all the reactions around that level? Look, reaction right here, uh, you know, came down to it, bounced off. Uh, little reaction right here, see the candle? And then we reacted, came up. So that's your level, and today, lots of reactions. Look, they gapped it higher, sold it off right below, uh, right below that level, so that was now resistance. Resistance held, it held, it held, it held, and then in the last, they started to ramp it up and then they sold it off. So you can, just didn't, you know, they moved it up here and you can see the tail or the wick and then it sold off. If I go to the one minute, you can see that. <clears throat> right there, see they ju just started to pop it and then it sold off. Closing below resistance. So that just was a, a successful test of resistance. Resistance held. Um, since we had that successful test, I'd expect that um, I'd expect now we move lower. So support right here at 741, and and then you break down and you've got support at 686, and then again big old gap down here at 650 that never was filled. So I suspect that's where this wants to head is down to fill that gap. Probably going to do it pretty quickly as well. All right, let's look at some gold charts. I haven't covered those for a while. Here's Barrett Gold, um, or actually, here's Gold Futures. Ch 
chopping around in a big sideways range. And that's why uh, I've just been kind of idle on gold recently because we've just been sideways. Um, now it is just moving sideways and we are in a larger bull market. So I suspect if we're gonna resolve, you know, we're gonna resolve to the upside. Here's gold bullion. The gold bullion broke down. And so here's your, here's an uptrend line that it was in. And then we broke down, did a back test. We've now just been kind of moving sideways. So that's the thing. I'm looking for a little bit of a sell off in gold, uh, possibly moving down to this 1570 support line. That's major support right there. So I don't know if we'll get that far down. Uh, there's another support level right there at 1670. Uh, and it looks like we just hit it. So right there so maybe that's all we're gonna get 1670 you know gold bull, uh, Barrett gold so Barrett gold uh, I'm not in this right now but it did do a back test look it broke down you had a nice clean up trend broke down but just sideways we're doing a kickback rally but this is major resistance right here 28 20 basically that's major resistance so I don't know what it's gonna do Maybe we gap up over that and move higher. Maybe it holds. We've already tested it once. This is the second test. So ultimately, I don't have a, a clean read on the near term with what's going to happen here. I was looking for some sort of a pullback in Barrick down to this 2250 level. Um, but, you know, I don't know. Maybe we don't get that. It, it's really It's really hard to tell. So maybe it wants to jump higher and do a full kickback rally. Uh, of this green uh, trend line then fail um, again I just don't have the cleanest read on it right now but looking at some of these other gold miners they've all broken down out of their upward channel uh, Newmont broke down but it just went sideways starting to move higher again Kirkland Lake broke down barely and just barely back testing that just kind of working its way lower Agnico Eagle uh, this one I don't think actually broke down uh, my chart Looks like I lost my chart here. Uh, you could say it probably broke down actually right there. Um, and we did a back test and yeah, right there. So you can see breakdown back test, still moving sideways. PAAS broke down from the bearish rising wedge, back test starting to move sideways. <clears throat> so it's, uh, silver looks bullish. That's a, bu that's a bull flag. Here's your, here's your flag pole, here's your flag should break out so silver looks like it's going up to uh yeah right up to there to about 1630. um if it breaks out there's your level 1630. um yeah so that's all oh here's xlv this chart floated over here big bearish rising wedge uh broke down but just moving sideways so again we need to see breakdowns in the price uh the setups there the bearish setups there we're seeing the price action there. Uh, we're seeing kind of end of the day selling and everything kind of breaking down, but we're just, it's its its not enough information to, to go off of. So uh, we need to see continued breakdown in price to confirm uh, some of these bigger patterns. That's all I got, guys. Let me know if you guys uh, value the content by leaving me a thumbs up or a comment below. Appreciate it. Talk to you guys later. Bye.